Did you eat what you catch today, though? I've got my gear behind me and enough supplies to last me four days as I tour UK's south coastline in search of some great fishing. We're on the tail end of Storm Nelson, which hopefully means good fishing and some of the bigger predator fish are out to play. I'll be fishing at least four different venues over the next four days with a variety of tides, conditions and bait being used. I'm burning the midnight oil on this trip and setting myself the target of landing a PB fish or new to me species. Oh, that's a but enough talking, let's get into day one. How about this then? Day one of the four day adventure down South Bourne. We've got the IMAX shelter set up out of the winds. A little bit, somewhat. It's lovely blue skies, the temperature's nice, but it's blowing about force five at the moment, and that surf is, is something. Although, that's what I was hoping for. You know, a bit of surf, a bit of action. Who knows, when there's a big bass out there. Anyway, it's just come three o'clock. I've got my creature comfort set up now. Time to get the rods out, the fish is starting this. Right, my plan of attack for today and tonight, I've got you in the tent, so you, uh, hopefully the wind noise isn't too bad. But I'm up at Southbourne, the swell is right in because obviously we've had these big storms. Storm Nelson was yesterday, we've kind of got the coattails of it today. Uh, and then tomorrow and Sunday, Monday, it kind of calms right off. But today is, I'd say, just about fishable. But still a lot of swell and a big surge has come right up the, uh, up the sea bank here. So with this, obviously I want my rod tips really high. I've got, I don't know if you can see there, the uh, butts of the rod will be right up high as far as I can get them. And I'm actually on a bit of a ledge here. And uh, to try and get the line way above some of the surf that we've got coming in, we have some big barrels coming over. Okay, rig wise today, we've got a pulley panel, which we're gonna put in some bigger baits on. And I've got a, uh, a three hook um, boom rig as well. I don't wanna be fishing a, uh, a flapper rig in this surf. I'd be spending more time untangling my rig than I would fishing. So hopefully a boom rig's gonna help us out a little bit. I feel like of all venues that we're fishing over the next four days and all conditions that we're fishing, this one's gonna be the toughest. I feel like we're either gonna blank today or we're gonna pull out something really big. I seem to find that's what these confounded conditions do for me. You either do really, really well or not at all. But, we'll see. All right, bait wise, let's get out our delicious ragworm. Ooh, yeah. You guys are going for a bath. And we also brought some sand eel for later tonight. But for now, we're gonna stick on some of this squid. Still pretty frozen, unfortunately. So we'll leave that out for a bit. Biggest concern is what's going to be the weed today. And I don't know if you can see that boy there. I thought it was a fish, I'm not going to lie. It was rattling my rod around, but sadly not. Now all we can do is sit and wait whilst my tent plays Fluffy Bird. <laughs> that weed. Getting annoying. Just traveling all the way up the line. Sadding at the road tip. So this is the difficulty when you've got a lot of onshore breeze and it's breeze. 
bringing a weed in as well. It's not so much an issue that the uh, weed comes up the line and gets from the rod tip, like you can manage that, but it's when it does this, and it completely masks the bait in the water. Well, I'm pretty happy with some of the ragworm I managed to dig the other day from Pearl Harbor. Look at the size <laughs> That is the definition of a king rag. Time for some dinner, I think. Tonight on the menu, we've got spaghetti bolognese. Tell us, spaghetti bolognese. On the beach, with the rods in view. A beautiful sunset by the Well, the sun's actually gone in now already, but it was a nice sunset. Brew's been boiled now, and I'm gonna tuck into this. Cheers. After some strong southwesterly winds, this venue can get clogged up with weed, and it was becoming unfishable. So I decided to pack up the gear and move over to Sandbanks in search of a blank saving fish. And here we are, in no time at all, down at a lovely calm Sandbanks. Also, I am aware that this is technically gonna be five venues in four days, but we'll just count this as a bonus one. Well, barely had time to get both rods set up. This has been known for about two minutes, if that. And a little squally bass. First of the year for me, and first of the bank holiday. Nice one. Oh, That's my weight and... Uh... Well, that out. Can you eat what you got, you can't. Yeah. But, uh, as long as it's above the size of it, it's different size of it. And you can eat that. Alright. Because I don't understand doing this without eating the motherfucker. I really don't. Throw it back. Nah. I'm not throwing it back. A few moments later. Hey, do you drink? Nah. Oh, that's a bite. Look at that, number two of the night. Showing off. I thought I had a much bigger fish than I actually did. Another little bass for the night, we'll get a turn. Some water. But I was also pulling in the seaweed, looks like we haven't escaped from just yet. I thought we left this at Southport. Again, this guy. Perfectly lit hooked. There we go. Number three, I think. And one last for the night. Potentially the smallest of the night, but just as perfect. There we go. All right, let's pack up and get ready for day two. Welcome back to day two, and welcome to the beach of broken dreams, Chesil Beach. I'm all set up, ready to go. It's just gone half three, both rods are in the water now. Um, it's just gone slack tide, um, and we're actually gonna be fishing the flood back up to around 9 p.m.-ish, and then depending how the fishing's going, I might fish down to the, uh, a bit of the um, ebbing tide down to midnight. We've got all the baits with us today, we've got sand eel, rag, lug, mackerel, squids. So we're gonna be mixing up a little bit and seeing what bites. Wish us luck. I'm really pleased that yesterday didn't end in a blank and we had those, albeit very small, but good fun ma um, mackerel, good fun bass. So I'm really keen to build on that success 
and try and make a bit of a special day of today. Chesil's always the one that can throw up a surprise. Right, so first cast is now quarter to four and the lines have been in for about 10, 15 minutes. I think this might have been on actually a bit longer than probably the first notice because it's busy getting the second one ready. However, we've got the first fish already. A lovely fish. So yeah, beautifully hooked right on the lip, which I seem to have a, a tendency of not doing <laughs> with dogfish. So happy to see that. But there we go. We're off the money already within 10, 15 minutes. And our second species of the trip. Now, I don't know if it's just eaten or if it's pregnant or what, but it has a really big belly on it. I don't know if you can really tell there. So there might be eggs, I'm not sure. Second fish down, this one, um, the dogfish of course, this one fell to the mackerel bait on the pulley panel. I sent that out with a fairly big bait for big fish I guess, and no surprise, it was a dogfish. So yeah, second fish of the session, um, pleased to be catching, but yeah, hoping obviously we're not plagued by these all night, fingers crossed, as darkness descends then the, uh, the fish of the species also have a shift too, but yeah, we better just go back. Something. Hey. That is our third species, a double shot of pelvic. So, good to see another species. The fishing's definitely alive. It's definitely on today. And we've been here for, it's an hour, five o'clock, so an hour and a half. And um, four, fi four fish in, two dogfish and two power. And I gotta say, I'm not fishing it too aggressively at the moment. I'm fairly laid back. You know, I'm letting bait sit out there um, because my main focus was gonna be tonight um, when darkness descends. So even still, to be catching like this um, is, yeah, good stuff. Great. Big wild little dog fish. Well, Seems to be a plague of dogfish at the moment. I can't keep up with them. <laughs> and um, using the pulley panel rigs and such is a little bit difficult to get them out sometimes because they get both hooks stuck down there. So I'm actually gonna switch out to smaller hooks, try and target some maybe smaller species, just some you know, easier to manage species anyway um, for the next few hours. But just, yeah, check out this answer, that's what I'm saying. Status report. Nothing else to report actually, apart from a steady string of the uh, dogfish um, whiting that we've seen. Haven't moved the shelter down though, and I'm now setting up home, I'm in the middle of setting up home, uh, before darkness falls completely on us. Um, but yeah, the wind has shifted a little bit, it's now kind of blowing um, offshore, um, and kind of down the coastline a little bit, which to be fair has like nearly flattened off the sea. It's a beautiful evening, really calm, almost like a summer's night actually, it's incredible. What that does for the fishing, I'm not sure yet, but still got fingers crossed. Um, I'm gonna be switching out my baits, mini fish through my worm baits. I've got loads of mackerel, loads of squid, and sand deal as well, so I'll put some sand deal on in a bit. Hopefully um, pluck out some rays, that'll be really, really, really ideal, so yeah. 
nearly time to get the head torches and the tip lights on. Sunglasses are off. And yeah, we're in the witching hour. We've got a bite on the left hand rod there. The classic curse. As soon as you put the camera on, the fish walks away. See, there's a big pull down now. Yep, still tapping away. All right, I'm gonna set you down here. You keep an eye on that for me, if you don't mind. Oh, damn. I just had a big drop back bite. Completely slack lined me, reeled into it. And either I felt it, I felt it on the end, I felt it tugging, and it was something decent. No idea what it was. But yeah, reeling it in and whatever it was came off. Damn. But it feels like a dogfish have disappeared, for sure. And the bite seems to be a bit different now. The bite seems to be something a bit more, let's say, uh, wanted. Well, first big fish of the night, unfortunately. down in the comments below what you reckon that was based on the fact that it's snap it's bit me off and uh, the way it was fighting I guess I can't that. Yeah. there we go it's only one little bead no, it's only on a little bit of uh, a little bit of lugwell I think or rag I'm not sure there we go damn the beach of broken dreams, eh? Dinner's ready. And a brew. Do you mind fish? Can we get my bloody dinner going? Right, that'll do. I've only left one rod out for the time being. Oh, it's already coming off again. The fishing's unreal. But I need fuel in, otherwise I'm not gonna be reeling anything in. Oh, oh it smells bad already. I'm gonna try and make a coffee as well, but I feel like it might be too many tasks for a man like me. Yeah, that's going off. All right, I need to rebate this one. Get it back in the water. And the dogfish decided to interrupt my dinner. Oh, I'll over these noodles. He can sit in that bucket and wait until I finish this. Dogfish. I wish I could show you the view that I'm looking at. The, uh, the stars in the sky at the moment. It's just, there's not a cloud up there. I know the video won't do it justice. Tell you what, I'll try and take a nice photo of my phone. And if it comes out, all right, I'll stick it in the video. Now, this, yeah, this is just, just amazing. And I'm having so much fun tonight. Like the fishing's been pretty much non-stop. We've had different species. This is, these are the days that you dream of, or I certainly dream of, you know, on the days you go, oh, we're going to get out on that day, we're going to try this venue, when it kind of comes together like this, it's one of the best, best feelings. Dogfish number 437, I think. So I've just had a thought, the clocks in the UK tonight go forward an hour, which is great in the sense that um, more light in the evenings, summer's coming, 
it's on its way, but it also means an hour less sleep for venue three tomorrow. Hmm. Ah, well, that's tomorrow's problem. Today's problem is just to catch fish or more fish. So we'll worry about that later. Well, it's super late, way past my bedtime. So I'm gonna start packing up and heading back home. But what a cracking day's fishing. I've probably caught in excess of 20 fish today. Um, we've ticked off three, uh, three species, um, conga, pouting, and dogfish from our four day um, adventure. So yeah, good day, really good day for fishing actually. I've enjoyed it thoroughly. But yeah, I'm gonna pack up, head back, and we'll see if we can add to that list tomorrow. Well, here we are, day three, and we're down at Hordle Cliffs on what is yet another stunning day. The wind is fairly light. There's a bit of a gust, a bit of a breeze just coming offshore. So the sea is completely flattened out, completely calm. Um, almost regretting I'm not having a boat day today, actually, but we're here. Um, gonna be targeting some flatfish uh, down into dusk. And then the big hope for tonight is, is a ray. That's on the, the bucket list for this weekend, for sure. Um, so I've got squid, I've got sand deer, I've got some worm, I've got some mackerel. I've got all the baits again. We've got a few different rigs that I've made up. We're going to chuck them out there. And fingers crossed we can continue this great streak of catching fish that we've had the last couple of days. Every day's got better and better, so open for a big one today. Now, this is a bit of a wild card venue for me, actually, Hordle Cliffs, because I've never fished here before. This is the first time I've come down and wet a line. Um, I have done a bit of homework beforehand, um, tried to watch a lot of videos, I've done as much research as I can on the venue, to try and get a good idea of approaches and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, fingers crossed we can make something of it. I've just got down here at the peak of high tide. It's about high tide slack at the moment. I'm gonna fish the ebb down to, I think, about 8, 9 p.m. this evening, and then I'll fish a little bit of the way up. So yeah, fingers crossed, we can get into some fish again. I want confidence that there's rays here. That's definitely one. That is the egg of a ray, which is washed up on the beach. So yeah, fingers crossed, we find the mother of this. Fish on, guys. I'm not sure what it is. Oh, just gone light, might have come off. Oh no, still there. Damn, I lost them. Oh, well, not sure what that was. That was on the sand here with a bit of mackerel. Oh well, let's get it back out. What you got there? Hey? Nice. That was on mackerel and lug. Yeah, they do take mackerel. There we go. Flatties are definitely here. Well, first fish of the session for me. <laughs> not what I, not what I, not what I would have wanted. Tiny little white in, but at least we're off the mark. Today is not a blank. He's absolutely inhaled this as well. So I might have a job getting it out, but we'll try and get him back. Right, okay. I'm gonna get dinner going and out of the way. 
bit earlier today, especially while the fish, whilst the fishing's a little bit light. So, for dinner tonight, we have spaghetti bolognese. Again, I, I thought I brought the beef ravioli. I did. Oh, I did. Yeah, it's all we're having. We'll mix it up. Uh, uno, dos. Nutritious and delicious. Wee. All right. That looks fun to me. I've got a new secret bait that a lot of you probably wouldn't have heard of, probably wouldn't have used it, but I can guarantee it's going to attract all of the fish. And that is tomato sauce from a Heinz can. I'm going to chum the water up and just you watch the bites will start raining in. Look at that chum go out. Beautiful. Well, fishing's been a bit slow, it's not picked up. We've only had that one whiting. Um, from earlier and I've been out for about uh, two, two and a half hours probably of fishing time now. So there's still time, still going to be here till fairly late tonight. Right, with that wind slightly changing the tide we've got now, we've got some nice surf starting to build up out at sea there. So I'm going for some nice gunky worm baits, just in case there are any big bass cruising through. Uh, definitely want to be ready for them if we get any. I'm not sure if you can see all that on camera. The rain has come. I've avoided this stuff so far for the last three days. But we have a shower. Maybe it was the karma for all the beautiful sunsets and scenery I'd been fortunate to fish in. But before soon, that light shower turned into something a bit more ferocious. Ooh, well, as you can probably see on me, and here on the tent on the buoy, it is absolutely vile out there, <laughs> hammering it down with rain. And unluckily, unluckily, unfortunately, even there's still no more fish to report of, which is a bit frustrating. I feel like with these conditions and this rain, the fish now would just be oh needed. But yeah, we're still going. I'm gonna fish this out probably for, I don't know, see how long I can. One of the biggest challenges that I'd probably underestimated with this four day adventure is the endurance. Long nights, you know, lugging the gear back and forth to different marks, locations, all the driving. I haven't eaten properly for about three days. I've been living off tin food and sweets, so it's difficult. But we're still going, still fingers crossed or, you know, that PB fish or new species, whatever it might be. Oh, this is tough going. My um, hands are freezing from the cold. I just rebaited the rods and sent them back out. Annoyingly, the wind's kind of turned enough that my shelter is now not head on into the wind. I've brought one of the curtains around, but the rain's kind of like blowing in. So I've been rushing around trying to keep everything dry. It's, it's too trick. I'm, I'm staring into the rain now to try and watch the rod tip. So I'm just gonna have to keep glancing at them every now and then. But yeah, this is tough going. I might, I was thinking I might go down to one rod in a bit and just try and fish the one and rather than worrying on the baits on the two. And um, yeah, I mean, it's 20, 20, 25 past nine now. I was gonna fish till about 11 anyway, but I might see it out for the half hour and see how we go. Because I mean, at the, mo at the moment, the fishing's dead. And these conditions are not, you know, not the nicest, not the most pleasant. So the two options are to stick it out, but then potentially be flagging big time for tomorrow, or we cut short a little bit early, and then we have a daytime session tomorrow. We'll get our rigs, get everything sorted, the gear tomorrow, good, uh, all good for tomorrow. And try and end on a high. So yeah, I'm gonna mull it over and see what we do. 
At this point, spirits were low and the fish even lower, and with the onshore winds blowing weed into the bay, it was becoming increasingly difficult to fish two rods. So yeah, loads of weed on that last cast when I reeled it in, built it up on the line. So I'm gonna fish just one, one rod now, just leave the pulley panel out there, which is a little bit further. I think I've managed to get it just behind the breaking waves, which is to be fair exactly where I wanna be um, when fishing. So I'm gonna leave that one out there. I'll start slowly packing up the other rods, start tidying up some of my gear. We'll leave it out for only half an hour or so. See if we can't scratch something out. Um, but yeah, then head back. Not been the trip I was hoping for, Hordle, but I'm definitely gonna come back here one day and uh, try again. I've just gotta keep trying. Do you know what I have just realized, which has genuinely just cheered me up a little bit? That little whiting we caught earlier, that's the first whiting that we've caught on this four day trip, four day adventure. So that's another species that we can tick off the list. Five species caught over three days so far. <laughs> that's actually genuinely cheered me up. So with that glimmer of joy from a small whiting in my mind, I made the trudge back up the cliffs, loaded the car, and got ready for day four. Ooh, out of breath after that hill. Right, I wasn't feeling that area. Loads of dogs, loads of people. So I've just dropped the tent back off in the car. I'm gonna head back down, leave the car here because it's free parking and head further down Sandbanks where I think it'll be better fishing. Whew. That tiring though, walking up and down these cliffs. Well, and just like that, we're fishing again. I hope you can hear me right. There's a bit of a breeze coming on onshore. But yeah, we're at, um, back down sandbanks now on the beach side. So it's day four. Take a little while to get settled and set up. Obviously, we fished down uh, Branksome Way originally, but it was just a bit too hectic. I didn't really feel the spot. I wasn't feeling it. So we reset up down one of the groins at sandbanks. Not too sure what to expect from this. I've fished sandbanks before, but never this far west. I've normally kind of fished closer up to the entrance of Pool Harbour, as you may have seen in some of my videos. But yeah, fingers crossed, day four, last chance to either catch a PB or a new species to me, and I am after flatfish. Wow, and just like that, it's bright blue skies and the sun is shining again. Still no fish, as of yet. The confidence is waning a little bit, I'm not gonna lie. I need I need a fish. An early fish always to kind of set the confidence is always good, I feel, but so far nothing. Come on, we've got to finish on a high. So I guess we can have a look at the rig I'm using, or one of the rigs. This one's just a little pop-up with a, I think a size one or two hook. There's some rag worm on the on a, two hooks on the rig, but I wouldn't use it. It doesn't catch my fish. Well, we are back to where our story started. How very poetic. I am nearly tapping out here in terms of endurance. You probably see, I've been, my face has really caught the sun. I was sat in my car just debating, like, do I just do I just call it quits? Do I head home? But then I had some really good bait left. There's still some good water in the harbour. I was like, ah, oh, I need to fish it out. I need to just give it a last stint and see if we can do anything with it. So I fueled up. I've got fluids and liquids, solids, all of them inside of me. And yeah, we're gonna fish the rest of this ragworm out, probably for a couple of hours, if that. And try and wiggle out flounder. That's why I want to tie this whole story off of flounder. That would just be perfect. Fishing from inside the car. Nice. Coming up to about two hours now at this um, final venue on the final day. And I think it's time to admit defeat. 
Overall, I managed to land around 30 fish across five species over the four days. I definitely underestimated the endurance needed to fish this extensively. And I don't mean whacking a bait out and leaving it for a few hours, I mean really pushing myself to fish better. Switching baits, changing rigs, trying different spots on the same beach, practicing better watercraft, all traits we learn and finesse at our own pace in our fishing journeys. Ultimately, I didn't land a PB fish or new species, but I fished new marks, learned some lessons, and overall become a better fisherman for it. And that, I can take. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more, here's one of my fishing adventures on the boat to enjoy. Or if you'd like to see some more shore action, here's another one of my beach trips.